Hey home bakers, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk bringing your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. Um, last week I spoke to you about how to slash a loaf of bread using a grignette. Uh, now, after that, a couple of questions came in, one from Tina from YouTube, thank you very much, uh, asking me, are slash patterns particular to certain shapes of loaves? Okay, uh, and the answer is, uh, not really. Uh, probably, there will probably be somebody who can tell you that a baguette is not a baguette unless it's got 9, 10, 11 cuts on it, I don't know. Uh, but it's not really an issue. There are a few guidelines to follow um, that I want to talk to you about today. And then I'm going to put together a little montage. I've done some slashing the other day. I put together a little montage for you, um, stick a little bit of music on it, of some ideas for you to use your grignette and get the best out of it, and um, just to make some different patterns on the top of your bread, your loaf, your baguette, or whatever it is. I'm going to do a little montage after. The aim of the game is to get the cuts to open up. That's the aim of the game, right? And there's a few things you can follow to make sure that happens, okay? Um, the one thing is, if you're slashing a baguette, if you've got a baguette like this, right? And if you're slashing it horizontal, uh, diagonally, which is natural to do, you slash it diagonal, slash like that, um, to get those nice cuts to open up on the middle, um, the main thing to follow is, if your baguette's this way and you're doing it diagonally, try not to go this sort of diagonal. Lean towards the, like, a long ways, along that baguette this way. Because if you've rolled that baguette up really nicely, making it nice and tight and building that tension on the top, on the outside, um, the best way to get the cuts to open is to cut it long ways, horizontally, so that, um, so that it, that tension will then naturally open up because that's the way the tension is going when you rolled it up. And if you have my look at my video on how to shape a loaf of bread, you sort of get the idea. You roll it up nicely, building the tension on the outside so when you slash it, the cuts will open if you're going across the way that the tension is building, if that makes sense. So if your baguette's like this and you do it diagonally, go towards long ways instead of across ways really to get it to open up nicely. Three things you can do when you bake it to make sure it opens up real nice. First thing is crank your oven up to the maximum. Crank your oven up to the maximum, you put your bread in it, and then get that initial heat. Gives you maximum oven spring, which is this, in the oven. Maximum oven spring because of the maximum heat. And then you can turn it down and continue to bake it on a lower heat um, to make sure it's baked through without burning the top. The second thing is you can use a baking stone, and you may have seen people making pizzas, cooking pizzas on a hot stone inside of the oven, or inside of those real heavy, deep uh, pans that's really hot, heated up inside of the oven. Um, because of the instant heat on the bottom, again, <whistles> maximum oven spring, you get that big uh, bounce, that big growth when you put it in straight away, get those cuts to open really nice. And the third thing is steam. I did a video on steam to have a chat about it before. Um, maximize the steam in your oven, get steam in there somehow. The best way I find is to have a hot tray on the bottom shelf, pour in a kettle full of hot boiling water, uh, be careful, and uh, that'll create big loads of steam before you shut the door with the bread inside to make sure it steams up really nice. That means the combination of the high heat, uh, baking stone, maximum oven spring, and the, uh, the humidity in there, the steam in there, allowing the crust to uh, stay softer for longer, making it rise for longer. That's how you get the cuts to open up real nice. That's my top tips. And here comes a little montage for you, a little bit of music to help you out, to give you some ideas of what to do. Uh, with your green yet.
So there you have it, a couple of ideas to help you out slashing up your bread, making it look properly artisan like it came out of a baker's shop window. Um, if you uh, want to get a grignette from me, you can. Shout out to Stephen Carr, thank you very much for getting your grignette and sending me a nice picture of your loaf. Uh, it looked wicked, well done, thank you very much. Um, yeah, get your grignette from my website if you want one. I'll put a link underneath. And make sure you're swift with it. Uh, you've got to be gentle with your dough and uh, it'll come out really, really lovely, really, really nice. And um, send me a snap. I want to see it. If you've got any bread making question of your own, please let me know. Stick it underneath in the comments wherever you like. Uh, let me know if there's something you're struggling with, something you're confused about, something's not going quite right. Let me know. And if your bread is a great success, let me know that too, because that's wicked. Um, lovely. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thursday. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for another bread making tip from me. Um, see you soon. One more thing to mention before we go. Slash your bread, depending on how firm or how delicate it is when it goes into the oven. As your loaf rises and rises, it becomes more and more and more delicate. And the more delicate it is, the less is better, okay? Less is more when it's more delicate. Smaller cuts, less cuts, because if you put a big one down the middle, it's got risk of losing all that air out of it and collapsing down completely. Uh, if it's a little bit firmer, you can get away with all these snazzy designs that you see, um, little intricate cuts or big one down the middle, or that sort of thing when it's a bit firmer. Less is more, the more delicate it becomes. And that's it from me. See you next week. Have a good one.